Bloopy is the gaming mascot you've probably never heard of. Created by the Swiss tech company Epsitech, he appeared in a number of games for their smaky computer through the 80s and 90s, some of which were eventually ported to MS-DOS. Bloopy's first appearance on Windows PCs was a real-time strategy game released in 1997 called Planet Bloopy. At some point the game was published for a physical release by Telegames. Telegames don't sell the game anymore, but you can still order a copy from Epsitech for the hefty price of 39 Swiss francs, which is about 40 US dollars or 53 Australian dollars. You hear that in the background? Yep, that's MIDI music. Oh, this is gonna be good, isn't it? Planet Bloopy certainly isn't what you'd normally think of when you picture a real-time strategy game. On the surface, it's a hell of a lot more simplistic and kid-friendly than your typical RTS. You play the game by giving commands to your faithful Bloopy soldiers. You click on them to select them, then click on an object in the environment to have them interact with it. This allows you to cut down trees, mine rocks, pick things up, and erect buildings. If there's more than one way to interact with something, a simple pop-up menu will appear to let you pick what you want to do. Each Bloopy only has a very limited amount of energy, which is drained by performing tasks and even just by walking around. Once you cross into the red zone, Bloopy won't be able to perform any more tasks until he eats some tomatoes, which can be grown once you build a garden shed out of wood. Before you jump into the hard stuff, this game has four training missions to teach you the basics of the game, like basic movement, carrying objects, building, and growing tomatoes. We also get a glimpse into the Bloopy race's reproductive habits. Finished. Maybe it's just me, but something about watching Bloopy gleefully running back and forth before his newly formed spawn scream as they come forth into the world makes this whole process a tad disturbing. One of the issues with the game that I noticed right away is how slowly it plays. Bloopies walk very slowly, and performing a lot of actions like cutting down trees and making buildings take quite some time, which can mean a lot of waiting around. Thankfully the developers were somewhat aware of this, as there's an option in the options menu to set the game to play at double speed. Naturally I turned this on as soon as I knew that I could. Once we've finished all the training missions, we're rewarded with this pre-rendered 3D cutscene. Now go on mission. I guess that's what we're doing then. Before we start the first mission, we get a brief introduction to the game's story. Bloopy's life on his planet is just perfect. Everything is nice and quiet until the day a strange meteorite falls in a remote, arid region. Sometime later, Bloopy realized that his crops are being destroyed by huge spiders. It seems that despite his excellent get it, because he kind of looks like an egg. Physical condition, Bloopy has caught a curious disease. He now sneezes and coughs a lot. It turns out that the mastermind behind Bloopy's woes is this evil robot who wants to take over his planet. So, obviously, we're gonna have to stop him. Okay, so let's get right into it then. Oh, another cutscene, alright then. I know what you're wondering, and no, I did not crank the volume up for that static at the end. It was just as ear-piercingly loud as that in the game. So, for our first mission, there's a fire that we need to stop from reaching Bloopy's village. To do that, we need to cut down some trees on the left. Seems reasonable. The game has two difficulty settings, easy and difficult. Normally I'd go for a normal mode if there was one, but for this playthrough, I'm gonna stick with easy since it's the default. So, here we are. There's a line of trees to the left leading away from the houses, so naturally I set off to chop some down to cut off the spread of the coming fire. Oh god, what just happened? Oh, it's spreading over the planks. Shit, fuck, fuck. I tried to get the remaining bloopies to run away, but I just wasn't fast enough. Okay, what the hell? You know what I said earlier about this game being kid-friendly or whatever? Yeah, scratch that shit. I just watched a village full of innocent yellow creatures fucking burn alive. 
That's my punishment for losing the first mission of the game. The way I solved this level in the end was by using all three bloopies to cut down as many trees as possible and to move the planks away from the fire so it couldn't burn through them instead. One poor soul gave his life in the process, but thankfully I won the mission anyway. Before I go on, I gotta talk a bit about the game's presentation. As you've probably noticed, the game's visuals are made up of sprites of pre-rendered 3D graphics. I gotta say, this is a pretty unorthodox art direction by today's standards, and I'm honestly not sure how I feel about it. I mean, the game isn't ugly, but I'm not sitting here stunned by its beauty either. It's got its own sort of charm to it, so I don't really feel inclined to rip into it. The music, on the other hand, I'm not really feeling it. Planet Bloopy's music is all done in MIDI format, which means rather than being stored as sound waves, it works by playing the default MIDI instruments built into your PC. This doesn't exactly make for a great listening experience, especially considering the default MIDI synthesizer for Windows is kind of... Bad. Even if you judge the soundtrack purely on its composition, it's still pretty bad. It's definitely not one of this game's strong points, and it doesn't help that the songs have burned themselves into my head after all my hours of playing the game for this review. Anyway, I wanted to get all that out of the way so that I can focus the remainder of the review on Planet Bloopy's gameplay, because I feel that's worth talking about at length. Aside from the four training levels, Planet Bloopy comes with 30 missions for you to conquer. I'm just going to show you a few of these and my experiences with them and weave in my own observations along the way. As early as the second mission, we get introduced to our first enemy, a spider. It's right there in a little alcove near the start of the level, but it doesn't seem interested in doing me any harm right now, so I leave it alone. I've got to get these newly hatched bloopies to the houses to the east, but they're not going to make it unless they have some food to eat first. But once I start growing tomatoes, this little bastard hops on over to start eating them itself, and even has the audacity to laugh at my misfortune. <laughs> I quickly realized that feeding my bloopies with this irritating arachnid around isn't going to be practically possible, so I restart the mission and erect some palisades to keep it in its place. This was the first time I had to restart a mission to get out of an unwinnable situation, but it definitely wasn't the last. This ended up being one of my big issues with Planet Bloopy. It's all too easy to get yourself stuck in an unwinnable situation that forces you to restart the level you're on. Whether it's using the limited resources you're provided with in the wrong way, building the wrong thing, having your resources destroyed by enemies, or just having your bloopies run out of energy with no tomatoes around, you're gonna have to reset your progress a lot. This isn't such a bad thing on the shorter missions, but some of the missions later in the game take a very long time to beat, and this would be pretty unforgivable there. Thankfully, the developers did at least acknowledge the problem, and there is a feature in the game to save your progress and load it again at any time. This, of course, meant that the game's harder missions became an exercise in saving as often as possible in lots of different save slots so that if I made a mistake, I could go back a bit and undo it. With the amount of saving and loading and saving and loading I had to do in some missions, the game may as well have just let me hit Control z to undo shit. At least that would have streamlined the process a bit. Anyway, let's go through the rest of the enemies in the game in the order they're introduced. The next enemy we come in contact with is the virus. Viruses slowly float towards nearby bloopies, and if they touch one, it'll become sick. Sick bloopies can't perform any tasks until they're cured by drinking a medical potion, which is made by bringing yellow flowers to a laboratory. The mission that introduces viruses also introduces protection towers. Save for blowing them up, the only way to kill viruses is for them to touch the electric fields generated by the towers. Building these towers is such hard work, though, that any bloopy that attempts it will die of exhaustion. Yes. They will literally die. Next up is the Bulldozer, which is the first enemy with the capability to kill Bloopies directly. These assholes will drive toward any nearby Bloopies and squish them flat, as well as destroying valuable resources, which can of course lead to the previously mentioned unwinnable situations. Luckily for us, the Bulldozer will also try to run over TNT, which is made in a laboratory from blue flowers, and sticky traps, which are made from green flowers both of which will kill it. Halfway through the game, we encounter our first master robot. This guy can use his various machines to spawn in more enemies. He'll always make sure there's at least one of each enemy on the map at all times. For example, the first master robot you encounter makes spiders, viruses, and bulldozers. For example, if you kill the bulldozer, he'll just use his bulldozer machine to make a new one. 
The only way to stop him is to destroy his machines, or better yet, destroy him. Once that's done, you can take out the remaining enemies without having to worry about them coming back. Then you've got bouncing bombs, which won't directly attack bloopies, but will instead seek out your structures and resources to destroy them, and electrocutors, which will chase down bloopies and let out electric waves that kill them. They have to stop for a bit to charge their attack, so if you're quick, you can run away from them. Both of these enemies can be spawned in by the master robot in later levels. As you progress in the game, you get introduced to iron and the workshop. Much like you bring flowers to a laboratory to turn them into medicine, weapons, and traps, you can use a workshop to transform iron into a jeep, a timer bomb, or a suit of armor. The jeep helps you get around without expending any energy, and for some reason also makes enemies ignore you, except viruses which can still infect you. A timer bomb is like TNT, except after you trigger it you have a few seconds to run away. Their usefulness is pretty limited due to the fact that nearby bulldozers will go out of their way to run them over and destroy them. Then there's armor, which makes you unkillable as far as I can tell, and you don't use any energy while wearing it either. The only catch to this is that you can't ride in a jeep or a boat, which means you can't bring it with you if your enemies are across a body of water. And there's a lot of water toward the end of the game. To give you a sense of what the later levels of Planet Bloopy are like, let me share my experience with Mission 24 of the game. The objective here is simple, destroy all enemies. This is pretty typical for a lot of the later levels. Seems easy enough, right? Well, no. We start out with one bloopy on an island surrounded by water. The only resource I have access to is a single tree, so naturally I use it to build a boat. I eventually come across another island with a bunch of bulldozers behind a wall of rock. There's also a suit of armor and a bunch of TNT, so I go ahead and use what I've got to take the bulldozers out. There's a virus floating toward me, so I get back in my boat and flee to another island. I notice I'm a bit low on energy, so I build myself a garden shed to grow some tomatoes. By the time the shed's done, I don't even have enough energy to grow tomatoes, so realizing I've made the mission unwinnable, I restart it from the beginning. I build a boat again, but this time I sail to a new island I hadn't seen before, one which actually has a garden shed already on it, complete with a laboratory, workshop, two protection towers, and trees, rocks, and an iron deposit. Obviously, this is where I'm meant to set up camp. I head out again, find some eggs, and bring them back to incubate them into four more bloopy soldiers for me to send to their deaths. My scouting efforts reveal that, in addition to the bulldozers I found on my last attempt, there's also an island with two more bulldozers and a bouncing bomb, and not one, but two master robot bases. First off, I sailed up to the bulldozers to the northeast, and took those out again as I'd done before. Then I send one brave bloopy to sacrifice himself to take out the two bulldozers on the other island, and then return to defuse the bouncing bomb with a sticky trap. Now I just have to deal with the two robots. I gather three bloopies for my assault on the first robot base, two armed with sticky traps and another with a timer bomb. I send in one bloopy to sticky trap the bulldozer so I'm free to attack the robot with a timer bomb without it being removed. I manage to trap it, but tragically the bloopy dies trying to escape. Conveniently the bouncing bomb spots my boat off the shore of the island and decides to blow it up. If that wasn't lucky enough, the electrocutor was caught in the blast too, leaving the master robot totally unguarded. Annoyingly, the bastard won't hold still, but eventually I drop my timer bomb and kill the robot, meaning this base is down for good. I send my two survivors back to headquarters to prepare for the next raid. I was lucky with my first enemy base assault, because thanks to its mediocre pathfinding, the virus that particular master robot made had managed to get itself trapped against the wall of my base, so I didn't have to worry about it at all. At the final enemy base, however, the virus stands guard vigilantly right outside, so it seems like I'm gonna have to deal with it first. I prepare my troops similarly to before. One timer bomb to take out the virus, a sticky trap to disable the bulldozer so I can take out the robot with another timer bomb. Only things didn't go quite as planned. The virus seems preoccupied at the edge of the river, so I send in a sticky trapper to go straight for the bulldozer. I managed to get it, but mere seconds later the robot finished making a new bulldozer which promptly drove over and squashed me. Undeterred, I ran straight in with a timer bomb, aiming to blow up the robot. This was naive of me though, as the new bulldozer simply squashed both my bloopy and the bomb. <sighs> time to load again. Alright, take two. I head down to the base again, only this time I send a suicide bomber to give my team some extra versatility. I run in aiming to take out the bulldozer and the virus. The virus gets blown up, but the bulldozer survives. We can't have that, so I send in another bloopy to sticky trap it. Great, it worked! Now I can run in and time a bomb the robot. Or so I thought. The robot had already made a new bulldozer, which predictably flattened me and my timer bomb again. <sighs> Load. 
I'd saved right after trapping the first bulldozer, so I can give this timer bomb thing another go. I run in and try to timer bomb the robot again, which ends exactly like my first attempt. After a few more grueling attempts at this, I finally realize there's no way I'm gonna be able to get rid of the bulldozer long enough to timer bomb the robot, so my new strategy is to go straight for the robot with TNT. Yes, a bloopy would have to die in the process, but at this point this was a sacrifice I was willing to make. I'd still have two bloopies left, and I only needed one to win the mission. I load into an older state where I still have my TNT on hand, scoot right past the bulldozer and drop the bomb right next to the robot. I get squished before I have a chance to activate it, but the bulldozer helpfully sets it off for me, destroying both it and the robot. All I have to do now is sticky trap the spider and I've won the mission. For some reason, the virus still being alive didn't matter. All up, I spent an hour and 13 minutes on this one mission. And this wasn't even the one that took me the longest. In retrospect, this was in part due to my own stupidity. Why did I keep running in with timer bombs without realizing a bulldozer would inevitably show up to squash it every time? Fuck if I know. What I do know is that one, without the quick saving and loading feature, I'd have given up playing this game a long time ago, and two, I would definitely not recommend this game for kids. This game will make your kid cry. Hell, it came pretty damn close to making me cry. Also, believe it or not, I haven't budged from easy mode the whole game. In spite of every fiber in my body telling me not to, I tried replaying a few levels on difficult mode. But for the life of me, I couldn't figure out what the difference was. I thought by the icon I'd have more enemies to deal with, but no, the level layout is exactly the same, the enemies and resources are exactly the same, there's no difference whatsoever, at least not that I can make out. I can't really give this game any replay value points for a difficulty setting that doesn't change anything, but Planet Bloopy does come packaged with something that I wish more games had, a level editor. I didn't really feel tempted to play with it too much, as after finishing all the main missions, I'd honestly had enough Planet Bloopy for one lifetime. It's there though, so I guess if you really enjoyed the game and wanted to get more out of it, you could make some levels of your own to play. There's no officially supported way to share these though, so the novelty's pretty limited. In theory, I think you could probably copy and paste the level files from your game directory, but good luck finding anyone else who plays this game to try it with. I really want to like this game, mainly because of how unique it is, but I really couldn't give it a positive score in good conscience. Finding yourself in an unwinnable situation mid-level is pretty damn painful, and the constant saving and loading you need to do to avoid that fate gets annoying pretty damn quickly. While I applaud the fact that this game tries to keep things fresh by regularly introducing new enemies and gameplay elements, this doesn't manage to keep it from feeling like a bit of a chore to play, especially approaching the end. I find myself thinking that the reason why I haven't come across any games like this one is because the concept is inherently flawed. Like I said, this game is really unique and creative, and I really want to like it, but considering its generally unappealing presentation, often grating soundtrack, and significant gameplay flaws, I can only give Planet Bloopy a score of 2 stars. As always, thanks for watching, and make sure to subscribe if you want to keep up to date with the channel. See ya!